Hey everyone, welcome back to the GM Details YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the new advanced Halfords cleaning products and giving you my thoughts on using them. Today, I'll be concentrating on the reactive wheel cleaner, the snow foam, high performance shampoo, and to finish off the ceramic foam sealant. So let's not waste any time and get straight into the review. Starting with the wheels, I'm going to try out the reactive wheel cleaner out on my BMW. It hasn't been cleaned in a while and as you can see the brake dust has built up and the wheels don't look at their best. Now the instructions don't say to pre-rinse first, although I normally would, but this time I want to follow the instructions as they are and see what happens. I'm also unavoidably using it on a wheel in direct sunlight, which isn't the best plan, but the wheel is quite cool to the touch, so off we go, and straight away you can see the purple dye instantly reacting with the brake dust. Anyone that's used built Hamber Auto Wheel will be familiar with the reaction changing the composition of the chemical as soon as it hits contamination, in this case it's brake dust. If anyone isn't familiar with these types of products, the reaction colour is only a dye. It's added to give you a visual indication that there's a chemical reaction taking place. A lot of these wheel cleaners are described as a pH neutral formula. At this stage, it's no longer true as the chemical reaction has rapidly changed the product to acidic as it comes into contact with oxidised metal fragments and brake dust. Some products contain more dye than others, but it doesn't mean it's a better product to remove those embedded ferrous metal contamination and brake dust without contact. There's more on that later. So once the product has been left to dwell for around 3-5 to five minutes, that's weather dependent and keeping an eye on it not drying out, it's ready to be rinsed away. Now this is best done with a pressure washer and it's always recommended to wear eye protection too as you don't want any of this stuff splashing back in your eyes. Already we can see the rinse off is leaving a very clean wheel and I'm actually very impressed with it so far. Now this isn't just a fallout remover, yes it shares some of the ingredients in fallout removers but it's much much more. The term reactive wheel cleaner isn't marketing BS, it's got surfactants in it and even delimiting which we see in the best citrus pre-washes. Now this wheel does have some protection on it and as you can see it hasn't removed the hydrophobic nature of that protection. And it was just a spray and rinse sealant too, I say just but that's what it was. So far, it's looking pretty damn decent. Now the one major disadvantage of a product like this is it's not very economical. It's not an every week kind of product. A regular maintenance clean with a wheel shampoo will be all you need to do from now on, providing you keep on top of them. And protecting the wheels with a wax or a sealant will help prevent the build up of contamination going forward. I'm going to show you how the surfactants are going to work with the easy wheel brush now for the barrels of the wheels. Starting at the bottom of the wheel so that any debris that might fall won't be scrubbed into the painted finish of the barrels. And I'm confident enough that the initial clean hasn't left too much brake dust behind so I'm able to work all the way around the spokes without cleaning the brush. And of course the reactive wheel cleaner can also be used on the tyre wall too. How many products do you see on Instagram being used to clean wheels on these reels that they do? So far, I've only needed one. And this is the result after a contact wash. So not having used a product like this before, I didn't know what to expect, but I'm genuinely speechless seeing these results. Let's take a look at a little before and after. How does it compare with any other similar products? Well the G3 Pro Wheel Cleaner from Faregla is the nearest equivalent product I could find. Admittedly I didn't look very hard as I had it in the garage to test out anyway, so what's better than a 50-50 quick test to see which cleans best? If you look closely enough, you'll see that they both have the exact same triggers on them. That might get some of you twitching that it's the same product in different packaging, but let's see if there's any difference in the cleaning ability.
18 sprays for the G3 Pro on the left of the wheel and I counted 13 for the Halfords on the right hand side and already you can see the Halfords one starting to react very quickly. What does this mean? Absolutely nothing. The purple colour is the effect of an added ingredient that changes colour after a certain chemical reaction. The topic of is a fallout remover a wheel cleaner is a very touchy discussion. The chemical process that causes the iron particles to be easily removed also accelerates corrosion on ferrous metal parts, so brake components, suspension components, wheel bolts etc. The localised acidic reaction can even play a part in hydrogen embrittlement in certain components. So the safest option would be to remove the wheels as part of your chemical decontamination process. That way you're not getting any unwanted chemicals spread over these sensitive metals. So back to the test between the G3 Pro Wheel Cleaner and the Halfers Advanced. Both have similar chemistry and it now looks as though there's only been one type of product applied as the bleeding colour is exactly the same. Both products rinse away cleanly without leaving any residue behind and after a thorough rinse there is actually a fraction of a difference between them. With the G3 having slightly more product applied than the Halfords, it's actually the Halford side that's cleaner than the G3, but there's almost nothing in it. Both have cleaned and decontaminated as expected, but the Halfords advanced side is just a little bit more squeaky clean on this wheel. With the wheels clean it's on to the pre-wash stage and Halford's new advanced high performance snow foam. Very economical at £11 for 2.5 litres, but wait, they recommend a dilution of 1 to 5, which is double the amount of chemical that we have come to expect from snow foams, but I think at £11 it still isn't bad for a 2.5 litre drum. 1 to 5 dilution it is then, one solution fits all. No mention of a dilution scale for different dirt levels, but I guess they just didn't want to overcomplicate the process. So I'm mixing up a 500ml solution here, as that's the capacity of my jug. So I'm putting a little over 80ml into 420ml of warm water, and then pouring that into the MTM Hydro Lands bottle. Why didn't I just mix it in the bottle? Just so I could show you what I was doing. I say this in most of my videos that the car always looks clean when you point a camera at it. Sometimes it works in your favour, but not when you're trying to show the cleaning power of a snow foam. All I can say is, you will see how dirty the car is, or was, in a few moments.
I decided not to buy the 500 millilitres of ready-to-use citrus pre-wash degreaser, mainly due to the cost. £10 for a ready-to-use pre-wash spray might suit a large amount of Halfords customers, but there are better products out there for your money and you can decide how much you want them diluted to. So it's only snow foam that's been applied as directed by the instructions at the 1 to 5 dilution straight onto the car without pre-rinsing first. And as you can see, it dwelled reasonably well. It broke up in a few places, but I'm sure tweaking the mixing dial on the lens a bit would take some of the thickness out of the foam and be a bit more of an even coat. It's a pH neutral formula, so ideal for summer use if you only have light dust or grime to contend with. Maybe double it up with a citrus cleaner in winter for a bit more cleaning power. As I rinse off the foam, it's not leaving any sticky residue behind. We can't see if it's cleaned anything yet due to the water reflection, but you might just see that it's not had any effect on the protection on the car, which is good. It hasn't stripped it. There's not really much more you can say about a pH neutral snow foam. It's fairly standard foam wise. I think Halfords are plain safe with the strength of it, and the majority of users that have left reviews on the website all seem to think it's great. I think it's very similar to Autoglim Polar Blast Snow Foam as a comparison, and the cost per use is a reasonable 40 pence if you only mix up that 500ml solution that I used, which means I could potentially get up to 30 uses from that 2.5 litre drum, because I only needed to use 80ml of snow foam to 420ml of water. Remember, different pressure washers and other lances might not deliver the same quality of foam. So to sum it all up, if you're a built hamber user, you won't like it so much. If you're an auto finesse user, you might like it. It's colourless, odourless, doesn't leave any horrible residue, and it's kind on waxes and sealants. As for the cleaning power department, well, it's done a good job of safely removing any loose sand and surface grime with it being in summertime, but as with most pH neutral snow foams, it's lacking the cleaning ability to remove that underlying traffic film in one go. first thing to say about the shampoo is I love the sports bottle type cap on it. Normally I'd measure out exactly what I was needing but the instructions say 10 to 20 mils so I'm going with the two squirts. Then foaming it up with the pressure washer and it delivers a lovely creamy solution. Grit guards in the bottom of the buckets and I'm ready for the contact wash. The label actually recommends using the two bucket method along with full safety info pictograms and a list of chemicals in the shampoo. So full credit to Halfords for that. The shampoo is a pH neutral formula and mixed with my soft Scottish water, it does have a lot of creamy lather which helps the microfiber wash mitt glide across the paintwork, cleaning off any remaining grime left by the snow foam. Just look at how slick it is. I recommend sticking with the dilution guidelines as putting too much product in the bucket can make it overly foamy and almost sort of sticky as you use it. But for me, two squirts from the bottle is more than enough and I had to remind myself to rinse out the mitt as it didn't seem to dry out or lose any slickness the more that I worked it in. So remember I promised you a look at what the snow foam didn't manage to clean. Here's a 50-50 from the bonnet showing one side cleaned with the shampoo and the other is traffic film the snow foam hadn't removed. So for me the shampoo did a great job at lubricating the microfiber wash mitt allowing it to clean that amount of grime. There's not much more to say other than I really enjoyed using it and what results that I achieved with it. I was intrigued that Halfords had included a ceramic foam sealant in their range and at £15 for a 500ml bottle it's not bad value considering it will give you 10 applications and protect your car for around 3 months or so. So I bought some to finish off the car and I can't wait to show you these results. The dilution is 50ml of the sealant into 250ml of water into the foam lens bottle and there goes that jug again.
Instructions say to move the car to the shade, which is mostly Scotland, so I'm okay to go ahead now. So don't blink or you'll miss the application. First, you need to rinse down the car. If you've already rinsed it after the shampoo, then that's fine, but with me setting up tripods, etc., it's dried out a little bit, so it needs a little water on the car before the sealant goes on. Foam lands locked to maximum product and away we go. First impressions, I would have liked it to be a little bit thicker, not much, but just to stop it immediately falling off the car as you work your way around this, but don't dawdle about with it. It's straight on, straight off, no dwell or bond time. The product reacts with water for an instant bond, so be careful not to allow it to sit too long. Rinsing the product off is recommended to use a pressure washer and avoid overspray onto the windscreen and wiper blades. Fantastic advice as I always hate how these products always seem to smear when you use the wipers. It goes on to say to use a glass cleaner afterwards which is again brilliant advice. As I rinse the product off, it's evident that it's another sheeter rather than creating loads of water beads, which should be good for keeping the car cleaner for longer. And I can confirm that after long term use, it does in fact have a very good dirt repellency. I'm also reminded that it's a very similar product to Built Hammer's Touch On Sealant. Remember the spray and rinse sealant that you tear the sachet and add the sachet to a snow foam lance bottle? This is almost identical to it, and where Touch On lasted around a month before you need to top it up, this one does indeed outlast it. Well, it has at least on my car. It's something you can use all over the vehicle, including wheels. And of course, one of the benefits of using a protective product like a wax or a sealant is it makes it easier to dry your car. Halfords recommend you use a microfiber drying towel, but I suppose you could air blow it dry too if you're posh enough to own one of those. So these are the results of using four of the Halfers products and I must say I'm very happy with the results. The wheel cleaner was the standout product for me but I'd only use this once in a while and not every clean. The snow foam and shampoo, I'd keep that for summer use but the sealant was very easy to use and the car looked super glossy and over time has actually worked well keeping the car cleaner for longer, which is a bonus. I'm well aware that Halfords haven't manufactured any of these products and they're made by a large chemical manufacturer and it doesn't bother me in the slightest. It's a significant upgrade from the usual watery offerings we're used to seeing in the likes of Halfords and supermarkets. These are definitely more advanced. So just one more thing before I go, I was having a little play around with the sealant being a spray and rinse topper or trying to make it one. And if you notice any areas on the car that might need topping up, you can use just 5 millilitres and 500 millilitres of water. And that will just give you that instant top up to the sealant without having to dig out the snow foam lance every time. So the range covers interior as well as exterior, something definitely worth putting on your shopping list for you to try out. 
I just wish they would do more in 5 litre options, I think they'd maybe see more professionals use them then, but that might be something for them in the future. That's all from me, if you've liked the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, hope to see you on the next one, take care, cheerio bye.